President Muhammad Buhari has ordered the Nigerian Immigration Service to make the country's borders impenetrable to infiltrators ahead of the forthcoming elections. On Breakfast Today, we'll look at the importance of this and how it can be achieved. And today is World Wetland Day 2023 in commemoration of the day. would we'll look at the role wetland play in our world. And in Off the Press, we bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. So this ahead on The Breakfast. Very good morning to you. Uh, this is Breakfast of Class TV Africa. We're coming a bit behind time. We apologize for that, but we promise you it won't be worth your while. So please sit back, relax and enjoy. My name is Kofi Bartel. And I am Messi Bokwo. It's good to be back on your screen this morning. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Mercy, uh, what did you observe when you went to work this morning? No, as <laughs> usual. Uh, okay, what's the, the queues? <laughs> <laughs> the queues have not, you know, ceased. The queues are still very much with us. And we don't know for how long that's going to happen. That's also causing traffic, if you like to say. For bigger yeah. city as Lagos, uh, there's always traffic because these filling stations are just by the roadside. This is crazy. People are sleeping in the queues overnight. Yes. You know, um, if we say Nigerian pigeon, I don't get stressed for that one. <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. People sleep overnight and they have to uh, remain there till morning just to get petrol. And I, most times I pass by those places, I ask myself, um, you're going to sleep overnight in, in a queue just to be able to get petrol in the morning. And you're going to just to go use it and it's finished that day all finished in a few days you know so it's, it's nigerians are going through a lot and um i haven't heard anything from the president's committee um to tackle the petrol scarcity i don't know you know you know, you know the, most of the comedians will say the president you know when they crack jokes and they're doing satire the president always says i'm not aware i'm not aware so I don't know. I hope Mr. President is still aware. I mean, uh, but he created a committee, a committee to tackle. Have you heard about anything? That committee that he, he was the chairman, then he put uh, the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Tim Pressil, as the alternate chairman. All these people who are in that committee, it's their job to actually tackle the fuel scarcity. Do we need to create a committee? So, no, they created a committee. What have they done since? No, but, but, you, but, but, but Kofi, you know how committees yeah. actually work. I mean, committees outside of, uh, you know, the government, everywhere you find a committee, just to understand that it's, it's just uh, going to be very lengthy. So this bureaucracy. Now you expect Bureau that the committee will make findings. I, I, committee will make oh, findings. Man, I mean, man. first of all, they mm -hmm. will investigate why the scarcity. Okay. Committee will make their findings. After findings, okay. they will submit the findings for verification. After verification, Finding, findings of what? Uh, uh, you know, findings of what? Uh, why petrol is scarce? Okay, if you want to find out why it's scarce, where do you go? No, uh, why are you asking me that? I'm telling you what's oh, going to happen. Okay, and after okay. the findings, they have to submit the report. Okay. And then this committee, okay. inside the committee, would okay. you know review okay. all of these reports and before your mm. implementation. Nigerians yeah, would have been I, I, suffering. I see, I see the sarcasm there, Mercy. You know, <laughs> you know when, when uh, Ibe Kachiku was um, Minister of Petroleum Resources of State, I'm not saying he did a yeoman's job. I don't think you know anyone has done a yeoman's job. Uh, but you know that when he, we had his scarcity, he... I don't know if it was effective, I don't know, but you'd see Kachiku in petrol stations with his tie, his shirt, he roll off his sleeves. He would record videos, put it out, this is what we are doing, that's what we're doing, this is what we're doing. We're trying to make this and this is work. Um, for now, I think the Minister of State, for because he's the de facto Minister of Petroleum Resources, President Buhari, is not there. He, maybe he just is the one who sits you in You can't say he's not there. No, no, no. In terms of being an active minister I, how are you sure he's not an no, active no, he, minister no, maybe not, maybe he's, it's his staff no no maybe, oh, the president you no, know as a minister the he minister can decide to carries the load and the bulk of the work president probably just approves decisions and all that but what i'm saying is we don't see um timmy press silver our dear brother from bielsa state former governor of bielsa state moving around um making trying to look at what's we don't see anything you know so my question messi before we move on and you know sorry take this time is since the committee was formed what have they achieved people are sleeping on the roads 
But, but you know, I, I mean, I just went through the entire, you know, uh, way the, the committee works. And, and you understand even what that one, Even that one, Messi, even that one, that they'll form a committee and then they're going to meet and then they're going to consider and they're going to take time, then they'll form another, another committee to study. It's, it's even not as bad as this one. Glad you see them doing something now. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. The first uh, top trending st story uh, is uh, a, about a group of um, uh, youth you know, who have taken to streets in a dose state uh, to protest the economic situation in the country, uh, the hike in petrol prices and the petrol scarcity. I'm sure they also have somewhere there uh, in their mind scarcity of the Naira. Um, let's just take a look at what they did. All right, so as we're taking a look at what they did, um, can you see what's going on there? Mm -hmm. Okay, we just teased it for you. They are cooking on the road. You know, some road in Benin City, Edo State, has been blocked over some protests that we, I said last time, it was just a group of people. But it, it seems to be taking on uh, added, um, what do you call it, added uh, uh, some, 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 some momentum, gathering momentum. It seems to be gathering momentum. And, the, you know, so, so this, this is interesting. Look, look at that mercy. Mm. It looks yummy. It looks sumptuous. I wonder what they're cooking. Are those noodles? <laughs> Can you see? Can the camera just show us a bit? Okay, let's, let's listen to, to, to what, what, what is going on there. I the play. <laughs> Oh man, I'm interested in what it is they were cooking. Uh, <laughs> it could just be rice. I mean, if I was there, I would have just taken my plate. <laughs> you know, but um, um, so it's about the economic situation. Mercy, that's uh, uh, that's that's quite um. So, so I mean, protesters. Reference. Yesterday, I also saw another video, not uh, very related to this, but it was also a, a protest where a lady took off her in the top. Banking hall. Yeah, in a banking hall. Oh, right. I, I looked away. Oh, oh well. Yeah, well I, looked away. I, I couldn't look away. Yeah. I, I, I looked at it and. I tried to understand what she was saying. I, I, she wasn't communicating in English, so it was a bit difficult. But however, you could see a young lady who's angry. Uh, Nigerians are really angry, that's it. Uh, you see these days, you see a lot that's going on. I mean, what you probably wouldn't have seen in 10 years, uh, 15 years ago, is what we're seeing now. And you, you begin to ask yourself, what's going on? It looks like everyone is not sane. Everyone is acting insane because um, I mean, why do you cook on the road? But it's, it's just another way of people expressing themselves and dissatisfaction, what's going on, uh, trying to communicate their feelings and speaking. But unfortunately, we do have uh, those who are governing their affairs and calling the shot. They're not listening. These people are making statements. These people are asking for attention. They are communicating. And, you know, communication takes different form. You only expect that, you know, there should be some level of understanding to know that someone is communicating. It's like you have a, a toddler or, you know, a child around you, especially the ones that have not been able to express themselves. They can't say the proper words, so you still have them ranting and, you know, acting. Sometimes they can be aggressive, yeah, yeah. and that's what it is. But you see, um, so the people that Nigerians are speaking, different reactions we have seen for the past few days, we don't even know if those who are calling the shot are understanding or they even see this as a means of communication. That's what Nigerians are doing. Why don't you take a breather, take a pause and speak to them? It's unfortunate that, you know, petrol scarcity is still ongoing. You remember vividly, I mean, it's like an irony. Okay, one would can say if it's an irony. Kofi, you remember that once upon a time when President Muhammad Buhari was a military president. He was also, you know, in charge of the, you know, the petroleum sector. So it's, it feels like, uh, you want to say it's a deja vu. 
that's what Nigeria's are waking up to now. Yeah, and, but, 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 and economic but this, this situation. But this president, interestingly, no, sorry no, to no, no. You, I, I mean, when, I'm not... just just to chip in, when he came into power, I think you look at Mercy, um, the majority of the time he spent as a president, it's been very, very good, very easy, very good. Okay, we've had, we don't have even the perennial Christmas, Easter, and Salah scarcity, you know, up to up to maybe a few a few times. Yeah. So my point is, you know, with all this going on, would it have not been, you know, is it not rational that you have, uh, remember, we know that we have dedicated a ministry to petroleum. I mean, so there's, there's a ministry that has been created and there's a minister and people are working, you know, in this ministry and uh, salaries are being paid. I'm sure that people are being paid for working in this ministry and occupying this office. And w there's no tangible reason up until this moment why petrol is scarce. Now, so, that doesn't so, so add that, up. That, 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 that's, I mean, that, that's, so that's, that's it. Problem, Once right? upon a time, a, Kofi, it's, I'm it's, just saying that we also had a time where uh, adulterated product was imported into this country. And the Ministry of Petroleum, ha up until this moment, have not even you know, explain to Nigerians how that happened, what has happened. So, every, you know, we just wake up and then it's, things it's are going problem. on. You know, I was, I was asking, um, I think Ukadike is his name, the, uh, the Ibman spokesman. You know, we don't know what the, I mean, it's, it's, it's and most of these uh, experts say, oh, we know, we know, it's our refineries. You know, but the thing is, apart from that, the, the one we've been doing before importing and all that, uh, what is the problem, you know? The Upper Progressive Congress presidential candidate is alleging sabotage, you know, it's alleging sabotage. Um, but, but right now, what we're talking about is that the young people, some young people in the little state uh, have been on the road. Now, the first time we talked about this, I said, you know what, it's just a few people, let's not over, blow it out of proportion, you know. Are they going to prove me wrong? No. <laughs> uh, you know, so at the time... Yes, so, mm. sorry, Mercy. Um, my, 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 just, uh, just my, my own you know, um, angle and what I'm looking at. I'm looking at where this will go, you know, to how, I mean, how it's going to pro pro progress. It's if this is going to be picked so, up by people so, in other states, if this is going to become something like Occupy Nigeria, uh, that will be picked I, I, up I, by I, people around the country. I, I'm not even sure that's the case. And if this will become like uh, maybe a national protest, that you begin to see little pockets of people going out in protests around the country. I'm watching. I'm watching to see. You know. so, so, I mean, if you we were thinking out loud now and we're asking whether that's going to be the case and some people are asking why hasn't that been the case, you know, prior to this time, you just begin to imagine. Don't forget that, you know, we're still talking about subsidy. Now, petrol subsidy will be out in June. You know, so imagine what it becomes the, right now. People subsidy, are buying, they said, you know, but you have to use history now to be able to frame your statement. They said petrol subsidy will be out in what? <laughs> okay, so they, they said petrol <laughs> subsidy will be out in June. And uh, imagine that petrol subsidy is out in June. So imagine what will happen. You know, just I, I wanted to imagine, just paint a picture of what it will be. You know, in June, now people are buying petrol at petrol station for 300 naira. Or three hundred and sixty, or thereabouts. Buying for four hundred naira. Depending on where you're buying from, <laughs> yeah, buying that's for that's not the black market. So we're not talking about black markets now. I'm, I'm and now this has a trickle down market. effect because I'm talking, the I'm cost. Talking, of, I'm talking about petrol stations actually. Now the, the yeah. cost of transportation, you cannot even argue that is on the high. So there's there's an effect for everything that happens. You say I like to call it a trickle down effect because if it happens on you know at the head, it trickles down to every part you know of the body. Uh, well, fingers across, uh, Nigerians are still speaking about fuel scarcity, and that's exactly, you know, how the people of Edo states, the young people there, have chosen to react to, you know, the non-availability of this product and decided to cook on the road. We don't know how far that would yield any result, but we will definitely bring you all the developments. Moving away from that, uh, the NUC... ASU has actually said that the NUC has no right whatsoever. It's not within her purview to shut down universities so elections, I mean, students can be part of the elections. Now, according to reports and data, uh, it might be possible that about 3.5 million students might not be able to take part, you know, in this election. You would connect that, you know, argument with the fact that schools were on break or shut down for almost eight months and our school is in session. 
Uh, some students are still writing examinations. Uh, we're still counting down to the elections, about 23 more days to that elections. Uh, how can that be when you have different students or this person's uh, back at home? Some of them did their registration in different parts. There might just be need for them to go back. So this is the conversation, uh, you know, that uh, people are having stakeholders in the academic sector, as we're saying, NUC is just a regulatory body. You have no right whatsoever. Uh, Nigerians have taken to, you know, social media, off social media, to share their thoughts about this. Kofi, but what, what, what do you make of it? On, on the 27th of October, 2022, um, I, uh, there was an, I think released to some information around that period, all right, the analysis of um, uh, the, the voters, registered voters, you know, the, when the PVC uh, the registration exercise was, was suspended the first time, you know, so from 28th June 2021 to 20, um, 31st July 2022, I think released, showed us how many people had voted and the demography, a very nice infographic. And so I, after studying it, I know we talked about it here, uh, I said something, this is what I said, analysis of the data shows an interesting detail. 3.8 million newly registered voters, or 40.87%, identified as students out of the newly registered voters. The largest demographic, uh, demographic or demography by occupation. Okay, that's how they divide it. Now, I said with lecturers, that's also on strike at the time. How many of these students registered in the city where their school is? What I asked, I was then. And, uh, um, you know, so that, that, that's what I asked. Now, there's a pattern playing out, and Nigerians need to look and be aware of this pattern. This is my opinion. ASU is playing a game, as far as I'm concerned. Okay? And the game that ASU is playing, I may be wrong, but it started from when the ASU chairman, went to the House of Representatives, Mercy. The way that ASU called off the strike and then the statements that we hear from the national executive chairman, for instance, of, of ASU, from the body nationally, you know, after the strike was called off, saying we'll take government to court, uh, we would go on strike if they don't pay us. I, I see a disconnect, Mercy, between the interests of the university lecturers, the demands that were made by ASU initially, ab initio, and the statements by ASU when they met with the Speaker of the House of Representatives at the House of Representatives in Abuja, and the reasons they gave for any calling of the strike without any written agreement or assurances, and then the body language of the uh, in the, the, the union after the, uh, the strike was called off. It's almost as if it's a game where they're saying, oh, we'll take government to court. Do you know how many times we've read, it makes me think of how many times have we read on, in the papers, in several headlines, that are so complaining that they've not been paid the arrears, they're going to take, it's all hot air. They've been blowing hot air. And if you recollect, some independent member unions of ASU had, come, had to come out and they themselves said they will go on strike. For instance, I think University of Joss now progressing some months further. ASU is now saying that they do not want the schools to be closed down for elections. When have schools been open for elections? When? Okay? So I think that the members of ASU, members, member universities, should go back to the national chairman or you know, to, to the bodies, have a sit down, and then let them agree on what exactly they want to do. As we speak, they're being owed some salaries. As we speak, the federal government, through the Minister of Labor, has recognized a parallel union. As we speak, the plans to pay the parallel union salary arrears, while ASU members are not being paid. And they're talking about keeping the schools open during elections. I mean, are students going to go to classes during elections when there will be restriction of movement. I mean, I, I see a pattern developing here, and it'll be interesting to watch what happens. But I want to know what transpired. I'm interested in knowing when they went to the House of Representatives and how it was so easy for them to agree to well, call off the strike without an agreement concrete signed in pa on paper. And then now they come back telling us, oh, we're going to strike. They just make statements that we'll see. And then, okay, how, how many times are you going to say we're going to 
go on strike if they don't pay us their arrears. Something you know, is not right. You, you know, I mean, we, we need to move on because uh, we'd have to come back with the papers this morning. But just to add to, you know, what you have mentioned, uh, there are also, you know, concerns as to if, if you look at ASU saying, hey, it's not within the poor view. Because right now, and everybody, I mean, when it's, it's no longer your turn, you begin to look at the law. It feels like we practice the law where it favors us. So we always make reference to the part of the law, like making reference to the part of the scriptures that you believe in. And so mm. that's what it is. So you begin to say, well, it's not within the poor view of the NUC. It's also not within the poor view of ASU. What's, you know, uh, expected is, is that the president have a say. I mean, if NUC can meet the president, the Senate, uh, that can be the only way. So uh, we understand. I mean, begin to look at it logically or morally. You ask yourself, ASU, you, you know, shut down the schools for eight months. And people are asking, uh, if you shut down school for eight months, how, what, what's exactly is the election week? It's about, it's a weekend. And so apparently, uh, you could just say, okay, let's just say, take back a week, right? Let, let the schools not be in session but for a week. Even though they are saying, I mean, they are putting yes, themselves out saying, it's not within their, it's not within their power. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong. So, I, I mean, to so say a week, right? I, I don't know if you remember way back then in school when you had student week. There's always one week, no lecture, that thing. Free lectures. Yes, yes, you know. yes. I loved it. I loved it. So know. one week of no lectures, I mean, the entire week from Monday to about, you know, the entire week and you return to school the next week because, I mean, it's just a lecture. So, no so isn't it not funny? The, 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 um, you wonder what, what the interest of ASU is in, in making sure, in keeping the students... Uh, in school for the uh, a week, but but but, election, but you know, also you know. saying they don't have any power to keep the student. That that which is you know also an irony, right? Uh, you begin to ask yourself, so what happened? So you have powers to say you can't come to school. We're not going to be there because there are no lectures, but you don't have powers to send. So, but I, I think that you know, if there's did a you way, see, did you see David Hunley put up? Sorry to David Hunley, the investigative journalist who's been putting a lot of fire on some candidates during this election, put up a a, a picture you know, with a fist and say students must be allowed to vote and ask people to retweet it. So I think that there are some things that some of these guys are noticing uh, that uh, is, is, is at play, is at play. I, I want the members of us to ask the chairman what happened when he went to uh, see Speaker Femi Machabia Mila in Abuja. All right, very quick, very quick one. I think we're out of time. So we'll have to, we'll have to quickly we'll go. We'll have to go. Yes, um, but it's been quite interesting. Messi, don't be small thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break. When we come back, we have the papers ahead. Please stay with us.